Hey, welcome to Bromine Rhapsody. This is episode number 22. Today we are at Indian Motorcycles Greensboro. That's Monty Hendricks. Can you tell us a little bit about Indian Greensboro? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So we're located here in downtown, historic downtown Greensboro. Uh, we actually were one of the first Indian motorcycle dealerships in the country uh, after Polaris uh, acquired the brand. We opened up here May the 3rd, 2014, and we've been here ever since. And we actually followed the original type of um, dealership model that Polaris had in mind for Indian dealers, which was more of a boutique specialty shop. The dealership specialized in Indian only, or maybe Indian with one other Polaris product. So here, 95% of our inventory is Indian motorcycles, with about 5% being the Polaris in the shop. And you guys are also one of the gold certified dealers? Yeah, correct. Actually, uh, we are a gold certified uh, tech technician dealership, and I'm actually a gold certified tech myself. Um, there may be another Indian motorcycle dealership owner that's a gold certified technician. I'm not aware of one, uh, but there could be. There could be another one out there. So they're not just a regular Indian dealership, they're gold certified. The owner is a certified tech, so they know their stuff. So come on down if, uh, if you guys are looking to get an Indian or a Polaris link shot. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, so what are we testing today? Well, this is uh, the Indian Motorcycle Challenger. The Challenger is really our newest bike in the Indian motorcycle lineup, and it's been a real, real hit. The big hit of it has been the powertrain. And I think that the factory has it set up perfect. 128 foot pounds of torque comes on around 3,500 RPMs. The 123 horsepower will come on around 5,500 RPMs. So it's gonna have power through the entire band. band yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't redline until up around 6,500 RPMs. Oh, wow. So, so really, it's, it's, a, it's a beast right out of the box. For this bike, it's so comfortable that a lot of people that buy this are gonna ride the two up. So they're gonna have a passenger back here, and then they're not gonna be always riding the flat lane. A lot of folks are going to take this ride too up up into the mountains and that torque is going to be what pulls you up that mountain and the bike's not going to be struggling, it's going to be happy in really any kind of environment. It's your boy Bro and I am your Bro Man. Challenger Dark Horse. This color is bronze metallic or, and it's got this flat finish. You don't see that on every bike out there. It's something really unique that India does. Absolutely. And, and early on in our Dark Horse lineup, um, you really normally saw the flat black paint. But over the last few years, they've been bringing us the flat paint that also still has a little bit of pearl flake in it. And I really am, am impressed with that. The paint finish is very consistent. It's a matte finish, but there's still a little bit of a reflective quality to it. And uh, I think that's what, why a lot of people have really been excited about these paint colors. And I'm sure you guys can see it on the video. We are indoors uh, with some natural light. Just look how beautiful this color looks and this curve. I love this tang and the little curves here. But that's not the only thing that's unique or cool about this bike, right? Got some other neat features? Yeah, 100%. Well, it has a lot of things that are kind of standard on our uh, bagger line within the Indian, Indian brand, which is some really cool things like the electric windshield. This windshield can be adjusted on the fly, 75 miles an hour going down the highway. So it has a lot of those neat, neat things. But what's really super cool about the Challenger is some of the rideability technology that's on it, um, as well as the suspension aspects. So, it does have uh, ride modes, so it's got weather mode. If you're out and it starts raining on you, you can adjust that, adjust into that weather mode. It's going to help kind of moderate the way the torque is utilized and to try to minimize wheel slippage. It's got standard mode, which is going to be kind of the middle ground, and of course it has the sport mode. Sport the fun mode. The right? fun mode, yeah. Sport mode is kind of exciting because with the throttle, um, in standard mode, if you were to just grip it and do this, the computer's gonna say, well, you know, I'm in standard mode, I want to really be sure we don't get the wheel slipped, I want to be sure that everything is, is super smooth for uh, your rider experience, and it'll help you out a little bit and make sure you kind of stay within a certain parameter to a degree. Whereas in sport mode, when you do this, the computer basically says, okay, clean and smooth. Let's go. If that's what you want, yeah. I'm gonna get it to you. And, uh, and so that's kind of an exciting thing about it. But the braking system on these Challengers is fantastic. It uses a, a perimeter style Brembo braking. 
that's something that you're going to consider. I mean, that's top shelf. And uh, that, that, I think, is just something that we've gotten great feedback. Yeah. yeah, you're talking about a bike that's just under 800 pounds dry, but it can come to a quick stop. And of course, that's an anti-lock braking assist. That's yeah. So yeah. interesting. This has got lots of power, amazing brakes, and it's a liquid cooled engine. Right. One of the first baggers to have liquid cooled engine. We think American big V twin baggers, you don't need big liquid cool, right? No, absolutely. Be air cool. no, the piston has to liquid cool. Right. So one thing, I'm just gonna come around here for a second. One thing about a liquid cool bike that normally is a bit of a concern um, for a bagger look or a cruiser look is that companies will make a beautiful motorcycle and then they'll have a radiator that's just kind of hanging out here and it kind of takes away from the look. So what Indian did, and they started this out with the scout one, is they split the frame and they recessed the radiator back into the frame. And so when you look at the bike from the side, you still end up with really clean lines like you would see in an airport bike. Um, you just don't have this radiator hanging out that takes away from the whole of the bike. And that would be a tragedy with this bike because if you look at this shark style uh, uh, ferry, along with the small fender. This actually flows so well with the tank. These two things match. They didn't go with a roundy tank with this style of ferry. And then you come back and it matches the style here in, in the packs, absolutely. So the last thing you want is some uh, radiator hanging out, despite what level of performance it might have. And of course, with the uh, suspension, going back to that, back here you do have a box adjustable uh, rear shift. Yeah, absolutely. Again, the top shift. You know, Fox is known for the racing suspensions. The bike itself, the computer technology is in it, uses a Bosch system that monitors the speed of the, the wheels using those uh, wheel speed sensors, and it helps to determine the speed. So we have leaning the technology in this, and basically what happens, this bike combines the speed sensors of the wheels, okay, the lean angle, all right, the torque this thing, the ABS system, and it helps to make sure that you're minimizing wheel slippage, it also, again, going back to the ABS system, ABS normally is a great thing, a straight line. All ABS systems are not great deep. You're breaking the track. This, this with the sensors on it, it, it senses things and it, it can assist the ride. So those are the two really cool things that you can get with this, this particular Challenger. I think it's on the dark horse and the limited, not the base. It's the lean sensing ABS and the IMU traction control. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that IMU is a Bosch system, and of course Bosch again, top shop, top shop, top shop stuff. Absolutely, and, and I'm glad you touched on that. Uh, you're exactly right. The features here that you're gonna see on the Dark Horse and the Limited Challenger versus the Base Challenger. The Base Challenger is an amazing machine, but when you come up to the Dark Horse or the Limited, you do pick up the Lean Angle technology. Um, you are gonna pick up the two button key fob with the actuator to lock the lock the bags. Absolutely. It's also going to have the GPS module already installed into the ride command system. With the layers for traffic and... But isn't that cool? Yeah. It, it is. It's very cool. very cool. Then you've got the tire pressure monitoring system that's also installed. And um, you are also going to get a little bit of an upgrade in audio. So now the base Challenger, for a lot of folks, they're like, those are, those are great bells and whistles. I'm buying this bike because I want that engine and that transmission. Yeah. And, uh, and I want that fixed fairing so it has that smooth ride, um, you know, where I'm, where I'm known to the long ride. And the rest of those, those things are just uh, bells and whistles that are not necessarily part of my size out there. Our guys that are buying the base model, they say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take those funds and maybe put them, put them uh, in, into other things with the bike or, or you know, whatever. And then, but for our people buying the Dark Horse and the Limited, they, they say, wow, you know, they actually, uh, the feedback, we got great value for those items. Great and value for those items. We were, uh, so Mommy and I we were talking a few months ago. Uh, I was asking, like, you know, is it worth the $6,000 for having all these bells and whistles? But you said, uh, it stuck with me. It's like, it's better to have these and not need them than to need them and not have them. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, 100%, because oftentimes we will have folks that might buy a base model, and next thing you know, they are coming back and buying the GPS add-on buck, or they're adding in the tire pressure monitoring when they do the first tire change, or later they purchase the actuators in the two-button key fob. But there's other folks, they've been, you know, they've got a very specific purpose for their bike, and they say, no, I go out there and keep the, the money in my pocket. And that's the cool thing about that. Yeah, you Absolutely. can do whatever whatever you want to do with it. At least these Indian bikes, I, I love a few things about them. The first thing is the design. I saw this on my Roadmaster as well. Like, 
Yeah, Monty touched on these things, like the lines. They, they make sure that all the lines stay intact. It's not nothing sticking out like ungainly or making it look big or clumsy. It's just the look is beautiful, the colors are amazing, and the things are just so cool. Well, they are, and I gotta tell you, I feel like that we're so fortunate with the Indian brand of motorcycle because our parent company is Polaris Industries. And hands down, Polaris is the largest power sports company in the world uh, by, by a large margin. So they have the money, the facilities, and the research and development to make a great product from tip to tail. And that includes rideability, that includes uh, durability, and that also includes um, the look of the bike. So that's, they, they really, because they have the facilities to do that. That's our Indian Challenger. Thank you, Monty, for letting Thank us you. order the bike. This has been awesome. Check out Indian Motorcycles Greensboro, and if you come down here, tell them Broman sent you. You have this nice key fob for this. This looks like a key fob from a car, and you can lock and unlock your saddlebag from here. It says Indian, and you have the Indian logo on the other side. Man, this is a good looking bike. This is a very good looking bike. So for the Indian Challenger, one of the main design elements is the front with the fixed nose fairing or the shark nose fairing. This gives it a very unique look, very different look from any other bike out there. It has the turn signals integrated within, within the front fairing. It looks amazing. Indian headers on the front fender. That lights up, but it's got this like little light going on top of it. So it's the dark horse trim, so the engine parts are all blacked out. I am such a big fan of this finish of the Indian, this flat color, the flat paint. It's beautiful, I love this finish. Now on the front fairing, you have these like little fins here. They are the wind deflectors. So they, they deflect a lot of wind away from your knees and stuff. That's the windshield and that can be adjusted. Oh, and this has a 25 degree rake angle. What's the rake angle? Well, you draw a perpendicular from the steering mount, you follow the fork tubes. That angle is the rake angle. 25 degrees, so the smaller the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is. To put it in perspective, my Yamaha R1, the 2008 Yamaha R1, has a rake angle of 24 degrees. And this also has the inverted front forks. So the, fork, the front forks, on the suspension, you have the larger tube and the smaller tube. The smaller tube, the larger tube stays stable and the smaller tube goes in and out. In most cruisers, you have the larger tube down below and the smaller tube on top. Here, it's the other way. You have the larger tube on the top and the smaller one down below. This gives the steering mount a lot of rigidity and aids in handling. 25 degrees rake angle and inverted front forks. This is gonna be a fun bike. The brake levers can be adjusted. Now, the one thing that you don't get on the Challenger are heated grips. They are not standard, but you can add them as an accessory later on. On the fairing, you have these couple of spots. So this is where you have your little USB outlet and a little cubby hole here. That's your power button. And this is where you would have the button for your driving lights should you decide to install them. This has a five gallon fuel tank, I think. So the fuel cap for your tank is locked. So like on my Roadmaster, you have the lock and lock buttons here. And on this bike, it's down here. So you can lock and lock your saddlebags and that's for your fuel cap. And then press the fuel button. That releases the fuel cap. As for the front of the fairing, you have the 100 watt speakers, speakers on each side, and the ride command center. And this ride command center is like the one I have on my Roadmaster. You have a button for the split screen, navigation, settings, phone, and music. So you can go through your split screens, you can have, and you can customize. I think there are four, three split screens, and each of these can be customized. All you have to do is press on this setting icon here and that gives you all of these options and you can pick and choose whichever you want if you have a phone you can pair it you have navigation your various settings you can turn your traction control on and off 
and you have the three riding modes range standard and sport all right so time to take the indian challenger dark horse for a spin <laughs> so this is your speedometer this is your tachometer with two digital displays in there and you have lights for miles per hour kilometers per hour kickstand light low fuel neutral high beams left turn signal cruise control on and cruise control set here you have your a fuel range on the right screen you have a tachometer with your odometer and lights over here are uh, low oil check engine abs right turn signal key traction control on the right hand side on the right side of your handlebar you have the kill switch on and off cruise control and this moves your uh moves that little windshield on the top on the left side you have the buttons for your horn high beam uh high beam passing lights turn signals hazard uh this this is the button you use to meet your music or skip tracks or control your music and this helps you toggle through the menus and on the top you have trigger you have a trigger on this side to search cycle through the menu all right so the first impressions of this motorcycle well <laughs> i like the command center i like this little cockpit view it's got a little windshield that you can move up and down to find that good little spot and it's nice i like it the handlebars are pulled back towards me so it makes for a comfortable seating position and a comfortable riding position uh, no doubt about that at all i'm 510 with a 31 inch inseam and when i stop it i can flat foot it and this is nice and when you're stopped it's not like it's gonna topple over or anything it feels very very balanced that's a very good thing now on my roadmaster i have these two gauges on the two sides on this one the stacked on top to save space obviously because this is a fixed fairing doesn't move <laughs> Now, I, ha I have it in standard mode, so we're not doing anything crazy, and this feels quite good in standard mode. It's nice and powerful without being overly powerful or crazy challenging. This rides very smooth. This is a very, very smooth ride. I really, really like it. And keep in mind, although this is like a 840 pound bike, this isn't top heavy this is very well balanced and this does not feel its weight it feels like it's a lot lighter and a lot smaller than its dimensions and weight the stock seat on this has a nice deep cut and this makes it comfortable this has a lot of support for your lower back and your butt and your tailbone i like it it's it's neat it's very very neat so today it's 49 degrees right now i have that little windshield up and it's blocking most of most of the cold air coming and hitting me on the face so it's blocking all of that that's a good job there uh, i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of this uh design of all of these indian bikes now is this a good bike for long distance touring Heck yeah, yes it is. This is quite comfortable. This has enough storage space on the two saddlebags. You might want to get like a tour pack if that's what you want. I think you can buy those from Indian or aftermarket. Uh, I've seen a few folks with tour packs on the challengers that really adds a lot of storage space. So if that's your thing, you can do that too. But and the suspension is kind of created for two up riding so you would be just fine going long distance touring on this this is comfortable the ergonomics are nice and yeah it's just, this has lots of features so i think this is perfect for long distance touring the indian challenger has three models like we talked about before the base costs about 22 and the dark horse and the limited cost about 28 something 28 and change all right so i'll go ahead and put it in sport mode and we'll do our little pull test and see how this how this guy pulls
This thing can move! Wow, this did not feel like an 840 pound behemoth. All of that torque and horsepower that came together and this just went. Oh my god, and if you turn everything off, traction control off, and give it a lot of gas, I'm sure you could get the front end to come up, but <laughs> this was crazy fun. But how about the cost of maintenance? Well, let's head back to the punk and talk about the cost of ownership, shall we? So in 2020, they had this inaugural King of the Baggers race at Laguna Seca. And the guy who won the race was riding an Indian Challenger. <laughs> It's a very fast bike. Even then, they were uh, they were racing with these baggers and the Challenger. So you would need to get a service done every 5,000 miles. That costs you about 280 at your local Indian dealer. And your tires will last you anywhere between 5,000 to 30,000 miles, depending on how you ride them, how you store your bike, your normal, like what mode do you ride it in the most. The more you rip it, the shorter the tires are gonna last. But So let's take an average of riding 5,000 miles a year and let's say you're an average rider, you don't ride it all the time in sport mode. Um, so over a two year period, you would need two services done. So that's about 560. And let's say your tires are gonna last you about 10,000 miles. A set of tires for the Challenger front and rear, including the balancing, mounting and all of that, is about 950 so that gives us a total cost of about fifteen hundred dollars over two years divided by the number of days it's a little over two dollars a day thank you punk and right now we're just making a u-turn and see this bike makes these turns so comfortably <laughs> now is this a good beginner bike uh absolutely not uh this has a lot of power this is quite heavy and this costs quite a lot so so when you combine those three qualities <laughs> this is not a good beginner bike this is a good bike for someone who's who has some motorcycle riding experience and they just want to get back they want to get into something a little more powerful than that something that's a little more fun i'm gonna keep on riding this bike while i have it so why don't you guys keep your knees in the breeze and head back to the punk to wrap up the video. If you like our content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Special shout out to our friends at Indian Motorcycle Greensboro. Check out their page in the video description below. Uh, if you go to Indian Motorcycles Greensboro, tell them the bromance sent you. So let's assign it a score, shall we? So on the looks, it's an 8.5 out of 10. On the brop, it's an 8 out of 10. On the maintenance, it's not very high, it's not very low. Uh, it gets an eight and a half out of 10. And on the comfort, oh man, it's a great bike. So I'll give it a nine out of 10 for a combined bromance score of 8.5 out of 10. The Indian Challenger is a great bagger. It's, uh, it's good for touring, it's good for two up riding. It's got lots of power. Uh, it looks different with that fixed nose fairing or the sharp nose fairing. Uh, the paint quality on these Indian bikes is phenomenal and riding it around it feels very well balanced, very powerful and very comfortable. Is the challenge of the bike for you? Well, if you want to go touring or long distance riding, if you ride a lot and if you do a lot of two up riding, um, it might be if you like power and comfort, it might be the one for you. Go check it out at your local Indian dealership, take it out for a spin and see how you like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.